Hey guys, it's Famous Amos in the Chill Zone and today we're going to be talking about the massive piece of adoption that has taken place in the crypto space. But if this is your first time in the Chill Zone, of course, sit back, relax, enjoy and get comfortable. Maybe I should have been covering Quant since the beginning considering my name Chill Zone, but hey, we'll stick with it. So what is Quant? Quant is a spicy project in the crypto space right now that is becoming to be known more or less as the undisputed leaders of interoperability. Their technology allows developers and enterprises the benefit of having an any-to-any -any blockchain relationship. What this effectively means is by utilizing Quant, you as a developer or enterprise can launch applications that can be used across any and all existing blockchains and possibly blockchains of the future if it is connected to the Quant operating system. For example, you're building an application in Ethereum. Only the users on Ethereum can actually utilize your application. However, if you were a developer and you're looking to build the exact same application on Quant, all the networks that are connected to the Quant operating system can recognize your dApp. Thus, it increases the amount of users you can have with any application exponentially. This also means that enterprises using Quant can choose to test out any blockchain they wish before settling down. Applications developed on Quant are called MAPS, which is short for multi-chain application. Now Quant states any enterprise or developer can get started with this in less than eight minutes with just three lines of code. Now I know after Oyster, the most of you are like, right, sure. Of course, buddy, of course. But Quant is the real deal. Later, when we start talking about partnerships and things that they have already accomplished, you begin to get the bigger picture. Gilbert Verdian, Quant Network's CEO, likens the current blockchain space onto that of when the internet was first created. Lots of independent networks that don't speak to each other. He says that blockchain needs what the internet needed back then. A true way of communication across all these network boundaries, but not just that. It also needs a frictionless way of having massive enterprises accept and integrate the technology. This is exactly why Quant takes the position they do. They're not here to decentralize the world like the hippies blockchain enthusiasts are to some technologists, but to ensure the adoption of blockchain technology. As we all know, large enterprises cannot and will not waste time and energy trying to revamp their entire staff with blockchain specialists host super nodes, buy tokens on Binance or some crusty exchange to participate in our isolated blockchain networks to then provide a new service to their customer. There needs to be a system that is so easy to use that current enterprise infrastructure does not need to be changed. This system needs to allow for enterprises to use any blockchain network available to them. And it also needs a system that automatically converts what is already in the pockets of enterprises, which is basically fiat currencies, into something that is recognizable by blockchain, which is exactly what the quant treasury is equipped with. Also, before moving forward, I would like to say, this is not some fairy tale project where we're thinking about what the technology can do or what it could be. The much needed technology is already created and fully functioning thanks to the quant network team and has already been adopted by major enterprises. This technology is called Overledger. Instead of creating another blockchain, the Quant Network team has instead created an operating system that manages them called Overledger. Overledger can only be utilized by staking or locking Quant tokens in exchange for a license which grants you access to the Overledger operating system for a certain amount of time for certain uses. So for all of you, well, if the operating system does all the work, what's the value of the token? There ain't no value. There you go. But that's not all the token is used for. We'll get into that later. The Overledger system is broken up into four defining layers. Like the OSI model is used to describe the internet, these four layers are used to describe the Overledger system. These layers allow Overledger to communicate messages across various blockchains and by extension communicate utilities across blockchains. These layers are as shown. At the bottom, we have the transaction layer, which stores transactions appended on the ledger's technology. Next, we have the message layer, which is a logical layer because all relevant information is retrieved from the ledgers here. Next, we have the filtering and ordering layer. In this layer, messages extracted and built from the transaction information and those only referenced in the transaction through a hash 
that is exchanged out of the chain are filtered and ordered. Next, we have the application layer. Valid messages that respect the requested format and have the requested signatures from the list of the application's messages. So we have all these layers and you may be wondering, so how does a developer and enterprise actually communicate with them? This is where Quant's BPI or blockchain programming interface comes into play. A BPI is basically a set of rules specific to Overledger that an application must follow in order to add messages or to receive output from whatever ledger. Essentially, the BPI is somewhat of a syntax or a way of putting in your information so that the Overledger operating system can effectively recognize and execute upon the information you have given it. And the Quant team has also stated that they are creating or might have already created an SDK, which is basically an easy way for you to just plug and play with Overledger. In short, which is very short, that's how Overledger works. For the sake of time, let's move on to the treasury. Now that you know Quant's vision and a bit of the details about the operating system Overledger, let's talk about the thing most investors want to know about, which is the token utilities. First, let's start with the Quant treasury. There are two editions of treasuries at Quant. There's a treasury for the community and there's a treasury for enterprises. Let's take a look at what Gilbert had to say about it. We are building everything with an enterprise first approach. Releasing products and solutions for enterprise clients to adopt with their large client base and market size. The treasury is live with several banks using it already and the process and onboarding was handled by us. Not all the details are known about the enterprise treasury at the moment, but we do have one important fact and if not the most important fact of them all. It's already being used by major enterprises. Now, there are different subscription models, but for the sake of time, I'd suggest you take a read of the token utility PDF made available by the Quant team. In short, the Quant treasury is how community developers lock their tokens up to get licenses, which allows them to utilize the Quant Overledger system via BPIs and SDKs. Also, the treasury is how enterprises convert their fiat currencies into tokens automatically for usage within the Overledger operating system, thereby creating that frictionless environment for enterprises to adopt blockchain technologies that we spoke about earlier. You basically understand Quant's vision, you understand how it works generally. We haven't gone super into detail, we'll probably do that for another video. But now let's talk about the relationships of the Quant network. And this is where things start getting a little bit <sighs> insane. So Gilbert Verdian, CEO of Quant Network is quite the connected individual. Let's go through a list of things the Quant Network team has already accomplished thus far. Gilbert founded the TC307 blockchain standards, which was a massive collaborative event and gained the participation of world government. World governments working together to standardize blockchain technology. One other big thing is that the Quant Network is a part of the European Union Blockchain Observatory and Forum. Per the EU Commission, Gilbert Verdian, CEO of Quant Network, is engraved into history and this can be viewed on page 3 of the EU Blockchain Thematic Report. Their CEO is also listed as a working member representing Quant Network among some of the big names like IBM. The Quant Network has integrated with what they call Called the Enterprise 5. This includes Corda, Hyperledger, Ethereum, Ripple, and Quorum, which is the blockchain of JP Morgan, which I believe already has about 20 banks uh, connected to their chain. Quant is doing massive things. They've also been selected to perform a reboot of Hyperledger. Quant is bringing interoperability to Hyperledger as can be seen in this tweet. Oh, 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 but, but, but let's not stop there. They've also stated that Guy Dietrich, managing director of the Rockefeller Capital, joins Quant Network's board of directors. You've heard that 1000% correct. Currently, the Rockefellers are in it to win it with the Quant Network. But don't worry, there's even bigger news. You're probably thinking bigger than Rockefeller? <sighs> yep. Now, the most recent and probably most hyped news of them all is the partnership with Sia. Now, I really wanted to know what's up with Sia, so I did some digging, and this bad boy right here is some details. Let's let's dive into this. Sia is a European leader in the design, creation, and management of technology infrastructures and services for financial institutions, central banks, corporates, and the public sector in the area of payments, cards, 
network services, and capital markets. SIA Group provides its service in 50 countries and also operates throughout subsidiaries like Austria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Germany, Greece. SIA manages 14 billion institutional service transactions, 7.2 billion card transactions, 3 billion payments, 51.7 billion financial transactions, and carried 1,204 terabytes of data on the network. The group currently has 3,400 employees. So I said to myself, I wanted to see how legit this is. So I began to do some more research on SIA just to see what they're like and who they are because I really didn't know much about it. I don't know much about the payment space. So I found this quote by the CEO of SIA. Our secure and reliable technologies currently support 20 central banks around the world to improve their own country's payments infrastructure in order to keep pace with the increasing speed of digital transformation. So this is when i was like wow um all right uh, let's see if we have any countries that are saying this as well in april 2017 payments canada invited three suppliers to participate in a competitive procurement process for the country's new core clearing and settlement system for payments called links the shortlist of candidates were cgi sia vocal link the link to this document is in the description down below. So then we fast forward to the 20th of February 2019 and SIA announced on their official website that they have won the contract to develop Canada's new high value payment system called Lynx. That's how big SIA is. SIA has the international power of providing payment system for nations. On the 5th of June 2019, SIA made an official announcement stating that they're partnering with the Quant Network. They stated, the partnership aims to integrate the SIA chain infrastructure into Quant Network's blockchain operating system over Ledger to develop and implement blockchain and DLT based applications spanning different technologies. So let's really put this into perspective. SIA, this international superpower, is utilizing quant now if sia is using quant as their solution to their sia sidechain which has 570 banks utilizing it one plus one should equal 572 now let's take a minute right here to just take a breath all right let's quant has achieved what ripple wanted to do quant is not hoping to get it done one day it's done signed agreed upon and locked into place and the significance of this will soon be quantified ah yeah i know all day guys so the rabbit hole gets a little bit deeper but nothing official from the quants perspective the same payment system that sia is now the application provider for ibm canada will provide combined hosting and system integration services for end-to-end -end delivery and system operation sia is working with the biggest and most reputable companies and countries in the world and that company has adopted quant so in conclusion quant is doing serious things for the adoption of blockchain technology while they are not here to decentralize the entire world they are here to make one rule absolutely vital above all, and that is trust the network. But it's not like they're not doing decentralized things because even though the operating system over Ledger is literally proprietary and locked away, as in you cannot view their code on GitHub, what you view on GitHub is just the public stuff like the SDKs. You're not viewing the operating system because Gilbert has publicly stated and he's not ashamed of it. We are here for profit and we do things like a business. They understand that, but the actual underlying technology that is over Ledger actually encourages decentralization because it's not like it's not conforming to the consensus algorithms of these various blockchains. It still has to operate in however those blockchains operate. And if they're decentralized, it's still going to be using decentralized technology. If anything, one can make the argument that quant is making decentralization take a little bit of cocaine. All right, so that's all I had for you guys today. Famous Amos is about to sign out. Someday I will do a deeper deep dive into the technology behind Overledger, at least from the white paper's perspective. But until then, stay tuned. 
Also, if this is your first time in the chosen, of course, please like, share, and subscribe, and stay comfortable. I learned that from the Quant Telegram. I've been in the Quant Telegram talking to these guys, and these guys are hilarious. I suggest you guys take a pass through. And also, shout out to Sonic and Luke, the admins at Quant. They are very helpful. I'm talking like super down to earth, very helpful. Get you the details you need and more. So thank you guys in the admin. And also, shout out to Blockchain Brad for actually putting me onto Quant a bit early into the scene. I reached out to him um, after he, he did his first interview with Gilbert and I was like, wow, this looks really interesting. And he was like, yeah, you should check it out. And ever since then, I've been holding on to Quant. So yeah. So I usually sign out like this on my channel. Peace and love. Always. Peace.